needed, we're going to be joined by a thousand people today, and they'll be coming in during the course of the morning. But we know some of you have trains to catch, places to go, so we want to begin almost on time. Those of you who were with us last night at the dinner experienced, as I did, a marvelous evening. Alan Dershowitz gave a magnificent speech. We heard from refugees from Rwanda, and an amazing person whom we hear from today, born in Iran, who has made her life's mission to save children from persecution. Today, we're going to continue in that vein with our conference on racial discrimination and persecution. We'll be hearing from persons from Darfur, Rwanda, Iran, and other places where persons are persecuted or discriminated against because of their race. For those of you who prefer French to English, translation is available and <clears throat> understand that there are mechanisms at the top of the auditorium. Please avail yourself of what we have to offer in the way of translation. And for those of you who are coming in, greetings, welcome, please be seated, and we shall begin. Our conference session this morning is being chaired by my friend and colleague Harold Tanner, who's the president of the Conference of, Pre the conference of Presidents of Major American Jewish Organizations, which gathers together the presidents of virtually all the Jewish organizations in the United States. Quite an accomplishment. And Harold was selected a few years ago to chair, or to be the president, of that distinguished body. He was formerly the president of the American Jewish Committee. And in his real life, in addition to his wife, children, and grandchildren, he runs a very well-known and successful investment advisory firm in New York City under his own name. A distinguished leader for human rights, an outstanding champion on behalf of the Jewish people around the world, my friend Harold Tanner. Good morning, everyone. Bonjour. Thank you, Ambassador Moses, who has worked very pleased with the way that UN Watch has organized this weekend and the role that they have played in making sure that this week is interesting, relevant, appropriate, and dignified. And I thank you very much for your leadership. I have been a longtime admirer of the courageous work of Hillel Neuer and UN Watch, and am pleased to participate in this morning's opening session, as Al said, as a representative of the Conference of Presidents of Major American Jewish Organizations. Some might say, are there any minor ones? We meet today in the shadow of the headquarters of the United Nations Human Rights Council, an organization that at one time held out so much promise and instead has been so disappointing. I can remember the, as a child the founding principles of the predecessor of the Human Rights Council and the optimism with which they were adopted. The hopes were high. The aspirations were noble. The cause was clear. We had just emerged from a terrible world war where so many millions were deprived of their human rights and the ghastliness and the shock of the Holocaust were being fully appreciated. Unfortunately, the Human Rights Council has been politicized from the very beginning 
and has failed to address any of the extensive human rights violations that have developed in the past years, such as Rwanda, Darfur, Zimbabwe, the rights of women in many countries throughout the world, and yes, the human rights violations that exist in the Islamic Republic of Iran. Conference of Presidents wishes the Human Rights Council did what it was founded to do, and we wish that this conference, currently in session, would have truly focused on racism, as we will this morning. This, today, we have the opportunity to hear from two remarkable individuals. Our first speaker is Father Patrick Desbois, Vatican advisor for Jewish relations and author of several books. He has received many awards as a great humanitarian for his work in researching the common graves of Jews in the Ukraine and the killing fields which had been previously unmarked. Through his research, he has gathered conclusive evidence of the execution by Nazis of 1.5 million Jews in the Ukraine from 1941 to 1944. He is the author of Holocaust by Bullets, a priest's journey to uncover the truth behind the murder of 1.5 million Jews, published in August 2008. Father Du Bois will talk to us about old hatreds, lessons from the past. Father, thank you very much for being with us. The floor is now yours. I think there is a translation in uh, between French and English, so I will speak in French. Je vous remercie d'abord pour cette invitation et pour cette initiative du Watch, car il est sûr qu'il y avait à Genève à sauver la dignité de nos institutions internationales, car lorsque l'on voit que le seul orateur était une personne qui avait convoqué il y a quelques mois, quelques années, le plus grand colloque de négationnistes au monde. Cela ne peut pas ne pas inquiéter. D'où est-ce que je parle pour parler du racisme et de l'antisémitisme Comme vous le savez, je recherche avec mon association Yara Dinounoum, dans lequel il y a dix jeunes qui travaillent, je dirais, jour et nuit, et qu'on a initié avec le cardinal Lustiger, mais aussi avec Richard Prasquier, qui était dans les premiers voyages lorsqu'il n'y avait aucune structure. Nous avons déjà retrouvé 850 sites d'extermination en Ukraine et en Biélorussie. Exec sites d'extermination de juifs fusillés entre 1941 et 1944 par des unités allemandes, qu'elles soient des Einsatzgruppen, de la police ou de l'armée allemande mais aussi par des policiers ukrainiens, des policiers biélorusses, des policiers russes, des policiers lettons, des policiers, je dirais, de toute l'Europe de l'Ouest et de l'Est. Je vais simplement redonner quelques exemples pour que vous compreniez qu'il ne s'agit pas de réflexion théorique. Nous travaillons sur les archives. À Paris, nous traduisons les archives soviétiques. Nous avons reçu 16 millions de pages d'archives soviétiques, des petites commissions dans chaque village que nous classons par, par village et dans lequel il y avait les premiers procès. Nous traduisons aussi des archives de la justice allemande que nous avons reçues grâce, je dirais, à la gentillesse de, de l'administration allemande. Puis lorsque notre dossier est prêt pour un village, on se rend dans le village et nous cherchons les hommes et les femmes qui ont maintenant 75 ans, 80 ans et qui comme enfants ont dû travailler, réquisitionner pour un jour, soit pour emmener les juifs à l'exécution dans un chariot avec des chevaux, soit pour creuser la fosse, la combler, alors que les juifs ne sont que blessés, puisqu'ils avaient établi cette règle, une balle, un juif, un juif, une balle. 